Hi everyone, my name is Luca, and I'm going to talk about the planted alignment problem for graphs or matrices with Gaussian weights. So first of all, what is graph or matrix alignment? Let's start with graphs. Assume that we are given two graphs, G and G prime, with the same number of nodes, and we ask the following question. What is the best way to measure the nodes of the first graph with the nodes of the second one? So this is a very natural question. And one answer to this uh, question can be, we'll find a bijection F from the vertices of G to the vertices of G prime that minimizes the following quantity, which is the number of disagreements. Okay, in other words, we want a bijection F such that if I and J are connected in the first graph G, F of I and F of J are also likely to be connected in the second graph G prime. Okay, so at this point, you may think of the graph alignment problem as a generalization of the graph isomorphism problem. Okay, indeed, if G and G prime are uh, isomorphic, finding such a bijection F is finding an isomorphism between the two graphs. In, in this case, this quantity here can be zero if F is an isomorphism. In the general case, though, G and G prime may not be isomorphic, and we still ask the same question, what is the best way to align these graphs? Okay, so an, an equivalent formulation is as follows. It's a maximization problem over the permutation matrices. And this is an instance of the quadratic assignment problem, which is for, unfortunately known to be NP-hard in the worst case. Okay, so what we will do next is that we are going to consider the planted version of this graph alignment problem, which I will describe um, in random setting where we plant a structure, a, an underlying uh, alignment in our data that we try to recover upon observing our uh, samples. And uh, the signal here will lie on the edges. So now we're going to consider graphs that are complete but uh, with edge weights that are correlated. So let me describe this model. We, we work under this correlated Wigner model. So first we draw the planted permutation pi star uniformly at random. This will be our ground truth that we'll try to recover after all. Then um, conditionally on pi star, um, A and B are two graphs or two matrices, symmetric matrices such that um, all um, aligned pairs are correlated with a parameter rho. And they are uh, all Gaussian standard variables. Okay. Um, we can also write this as B equals rho times a permutated version of A plus some uh, additional random noise. Um, so you see here an example of our model. So the graphs are complete and their edge weights are correlated and we want to find exactly our permutation back. So the goal is to recover all pi star. Okay, so in these, uh, in these inference problems, uh, when we want exact recovery, an optimal estimator is the maximum a posteriori estimator. Okay, it's optimal in the base risk sense. So we try to derive this uh, maximum uh, a posteriori estimator. So it's uh, quite simple. We just uh, compute the posterior distribution of pi star given A and B, and we try to maximize it. And if we want to maximize this um, posterior distribution, we end up with the same maximization problem as described um, at the beginning of the talk, this uh, quadratic assignment problem. So you see the connection with the, with the first problem in the non-planted version. Here, the solution to the maximum, uh, the optimization problem is the uh, map estimator of our planted structure in our data. Okay, so uh, the result that I'm going to describe now is an information theoretic result uh, establishing a sharp threshold under which um, we cannot hope to recover pi star uh, exactly, and above which it is possible to, to recover pi star exactly with no computational limits. Okay, so in this case, this uh, map estimator will succeed, but we don't really look at this computational complexity to derive uh, 
uh, this estimator, which is actually very large. Okay, so um, the the result is in two parts. First, the achievability part. If rho squared is greater than four plus epsilon log n over n, then the map estimator succeeds uh, in the sense that pi hat, pi hat is equal to pi star with probability tending to one with when n goes to infinity. And conversely, if rho, rho squared is less than four log n over n, you see the correction terms here, then there's no way that we can recover exactly our uh, planted structure. Okay, any estimator will not be will not be able to recover our permutation pi star with probability tending to one. So let's discuss rapidly the the proof outline. So the achievability result is the analysis of the map estimator. The goal here is to show that with high probability, under the correct uh, uh, assumption, um, all um, the, so the, the map estimator, the, the solution to this optimization problem here will indeed match uh, the, the planted structure. Okay, so in order to do this, uh, first moment method fails because there are, there are also some correlations um, in this loss functions. Um, so uh, the, the, the issue here is to consider the correlations um, in the in the data and to try to um, to derive this uh, this bound. The converse result is to show that there exists actually a perturbation of pi star and the, the, the correct uh, assumption that will beat the uh, score of pi star. Okay, so namely we show that there exists a transposition tau such that uh, pi star um, pi star tau uh, actually beats pi star, and then the map estimator won't be exactly pi star. Okay, so uh, this is just the second moment method here. All right, so back to our results. This um, result may seem a little bit counterintuitive at the first sight because we here allow, we can allow rho to tend to zero, for instance. Not too rapidly, but we, we can um, allow it to, to tend to zero and still claim that it is possible to recover exactly our underlying permutation. So here we may think of something um, a bit crazy because if rho is going to zero, well, the matrices will be real, really different and it may seem really difficult to align them. But the uh, the actual um, intuition under this uh, question is that the, the matrices are of size typically n squared over two, and the, the structure that it contains um, is very important for our problem because we only want a permutation that is on n vertices. So we want a permutation in the matrix that is the trace of a permutation of the nodes. So this is a a strong, um, a strong um, structure in our uh, uh, in our permutation. So if we compare with the the simpler case, which is vector alignment. So in this problem, we still have two random vectors. So no more matrices here, just random vectors that are correlated with this underlying permutation pi uh, star. And we take these vectors of size big N. The map estimator here is um, also a, a kind of um, solution to a maximization problem, which is very simpler uh, because here you see that we only align vectors. And this problem is the linear assignment problem, which is solvable in polynomial time with famous algorithms such as the Hungarian algorithm. And um, this problem, has, this planted version has also been uh, studied recently. And it is shown that there exists a sharp threshold for exact recovery. If we take big N to be the size of uh, our matrices, the number of edges of our graphs, we end up with um, a threshold of the following form, one minus rho squared is less or equal to N minus to the power minus eight. 
So we see that the threshold is completely different. And solving this quadratic assignment problem is really different from solving a linear assignment problem. You see that the structure in um, the matrices is very important and that's why we can allow um, row, for instance, to tend to zero. In other words, we can say that vectors, vector alignment is a very bad relaxation of matrix alignment. Okay, so this is verified also in the experiments. If we want to align two graphs and we say, oh, we will see the edges as uh, independent and we'll take just an alignment of two vectors of size n and minus one over two, the permutation we end up with has nothing to do with the node permutation in the general case. So this is not a relaxation that can work. Okay, so um, let's discuss a little bit the, the computational limits of our problem. We, we are back now with uh, matrices. Um, some algorithms are known, are provably, uh, provably work uh, in uh, some settings. And um, there are two families. So the first one is uh, in time complexity, uh, O of n cubed, and it requires rho to tend to one, as you can see here. Another uh, simpler method uh, with complexity n squared uh, requires rho to tend to one even uh, with a higher rate, you see. So in all cases, we need rho to tend to one to be able to align uh, our matrices in polynomial time. And this is really far from the informational threshold, which is at n um, rho squared over log n of the order of four. So this is typically a problem where we can conjecture the hard phase to be really wide. Okay, so this is a, um, a conjecture that we can make. Given the recent results on algorithms, we see that the gap is huge between the computational phase and the informational phase. Um, and maybe going a bit deeper in this uh, problem can be interesting, you know, trying to characterize this hard phase is still an open question, maybe the subject of future work. So uh, thank you very much for your attention and feel free to come to me for uh, further discussions. Thanks.